We've got a lot of questions on uh, education. Let's move to another one. The next question is from Tom Harmon. Hi, this is another question for Chris Pine. Um, my name's Tom, I'm from Socialist Alternative and the Education Action Group at Macquarie. You've favourably spoken of deregulation of universities along US lines in terms of setting the sector free. As a student, this proposal worries me because student debt in the USA totals over $1 trillion and the president there has described it as an economic crisis. On top of deregulation, letting the unis charge whatever they want, the recent commission of audit, God, like, <laughs> recommended fee increases and suggested that students should start to repay their debt once they start earning minimum wage. What's your position on this? And wouldn't you agree that emulating the American model rather than freeing students would limit access to education for, say, the poor and disadvantaged? Christopher Pine. Well, uh, I haven't said that we should have a system like the United States. Oh, yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm actually quoting <laughs> you. <laughs> well, it's not a lie, actually. I've well, never we said that we should have a system SMH. like the United States. What Why I've don't we is... uh, let the minister answer yeah. your question? Well, can we oh, do that? <laughs> well, I actually haven't been given the well, opportunity to do on. so. I'm giving you an opportunity. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Uh, I haven't said that we want to have a system like the United States. What I've said is that the United States has features which are very attractive and one of those features is the fact that they have teaching only colleges and obviously research based universities. So they have a diversity in their education system which we don't have to the same extent here. And one of the good things about the, the US system is that because of their colleges, which are teaching only institutions, uh, many, many students get the opportunity to go to college who wouldn't necessarily want to go to university. To the reason, the reason, the, the reason, now, the reason the United... We might just hang on because there's a few people with their hands up and we'll come back to them in a minute, but we still have to hear the end of the answer, OK? The reason why the United States system is completely unlike the Australian system is because we have a world-leading loans program for students. So that... <laughs> no, I don't. Why, why doesn't he do all the answers? All right. <laughs> you, need, you, need to, uh, you need to, as I've suggested, let the minister answer. And what we'll do is, actually, we've got a few people with their hands up, so we'll quickly go to... No, we'll go to this gentleman at the front here with his hand up. Um, Mr Pine, should we be looking to the United States as an example of what we should be doing, considering the basket case of a country that it seems to be? <laughs> well, I think there are... There are good features and bad features about every system. And one of the great features about the Australian system, which we strongly support, is that we have a world-leading uh, higher education loans program, what we used to call the Higher Education Contribution Scheme, so that students who go to university in Australia can borrow every single dollar of the fees that they pay for going to university from the taxpayer and pay it back on an income contingent loan at very low percentages. So, in other words, university students who have a less than 1% unemployment rate and who over a lifetime earn 75% more than someone who doesn't go to university can borrow every single dollar from the taxpayer to go to university and pay it back when they start earning over $50,000 a year at 2% of their income. It is a very generous loan scheme and it doesn't exist in the United States. And that's why trying to compare Australia and the United States to each other is impossible. But you can say that there are features of the US system which are good features and that is having teaching only institutions like colleges and that's what I said. But what I do think we should do and I, I support the deregulation and the, ex the, in, the entrance of competition into the higher education market because that ensures quality being offered to students That's because competition, competition always ensures high quality well, as, people compete, like as, people com well as people compete as people compete for... Okay, I know. Uh, at the beginning of this show, we explained that if people call out, the microphones will stay away from them. That's not the way you get involved in the discussion on this show. People with their hands up will come to. I want to hear from the other panellists, though. Mark Trevorrow. Oh, well, what, what year did you... Get to finish university. I paid, I paid the higher education Did contribution you? scheme. Did you? I'm very happy to do so because I got a fantastic education and I paid it back through my income once I started earning money. Oh, I'm glad to hear. Christopher Pine, the uh, the other part of that, <laughs> the other part, 
Christopher, the other part of the... You would have too, because you are younger than me. Well, I, I started as a copy boy at the age of 17, so, you know... Christopher, the other what part of that question was about whether or not uh, the hex fees are going to go up, and you indicated yesterday that you seem to favour that possibility. Well, what I said yesterday on the Insiders program was that I think that currently students pay about 40% of the cost of their tuition. So taxpayers pay the other 60% entirely. Students pay 40%, all of which they can borrow from taxpayers. So there are about 60% of all Australians don't have a university degree. And those people are subsidising everyone at university. And I was lucky to go to university and therefore get that subsidy. I think students can make a greater contribution to the cost of their education, especially since more than one in two will never get the opportunity and will that had. decision be made in this budget uh, briefly? You don't have to, have to well, say what it'll the budget. be. I was but just talking... uh, you, are, you are obviously running flags up polls and people are very interested. In fact, some are scared that they may end up paying as much as the Commission of Audit is suggesting. Well, the Commission of Audit is a report to the government. It's not a report of the government. In other words, they might make... Well, they've made 86 recommendations, some of which we might adopt, many of which we might not, and some might be partially adopted. Now, let's wait and see on Tuesday how the government responds to okay, the Commission. OK, before I bring in the other uh, panellists, um, we do have a, another question. The question is from Rita Hassan. Yeah, hi. My name is Rita Hassan. I'm one of the education officers in the Sydney University Student Representative Council and a member of Socialist Alternative. In my position as education officer at Sydney Uni, it's become, and it's common knowledge, that at the group of eight universities, uh, they're dominated by students from private school wealthy backgrounds. If fees are deregulated, this will mean the group of eight universities can raise their fees as much as they want, uh, and uh, this will mean will further impede working class and low SES students' entry into those universities. In America, where fees are deregulated, uh, there's become a two-tier system where the Ivy Leagues like Yale and Harvard are, uh, again, uh, populated by rich students uh, and everyone else is funnelled into under-resourced, underfunded uh, junior colleges, community colleges, which offer uh, lesser qualifications, which is more impediment okay, to working class let's people not turn your, uh, Let's not turn your question into a speech. Come to it quickly. Yeah, so how can you defend the deregulation of fees, turning universities more into businesses uh, than providers of education for all? Because I truly think that education should be for all and not just the rich. So how can you defend fee deregulation? Okay. I'm going to let you take a breather so the other panelists can come. I'm quite so Let's go to Anna Burke, first of all. Um, well, I must be the oldest one here because I got my oh, undergraduation... Well, thank you. Uh, we had a little musical interlude there while we uh, <laughs> get democracy back on track. OK, apologies to the Minister, apologies to everyone on the panel, apologies to the wider audience watching. That is not what we want to happen on this program. That is not what democracy is all about. And those students should understand that. However, we do see that passions are raised by this all over the place. We've got a video question on this equity issue. It's from Lachlan Hunter in Bruce Rock 